So I'm so excited to share this with you today. I'm out here painting a blue bear forest. It's a carpet of blues and violets and I think I'm going to find an excuse to add some pink or red in it because simply a painting is not done, a painting of mine at least, until you have some red in it. Besides, with all this green just starting to happen because it's spring, I think having a bit of a complementary color is going to enhance the whole. So let's start. So I will start by wetting this canvas and fear not, it's not like I'm going to start on this murky light blue. Why would I start painting something blue with blue? Haha, <laughs> no, 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 no. There is no wind, so I'm going to lift this up and see that I have an even base, fairly even. To work on. Why do I start with pink? Number one, because it's pretty. Number two, every color will have its own overall feel or, at or atmosphere. It lands an overall pretty and fresh feel to a landscape, especially an overwhelmingly green and blue one, if you do it on a pink base. Yeah, so I think I'm about to start on this base. So I keep working with my primary red, adding the basic dark patches of those woods and bushes in the background. I'm just using a regular kitchen sponge or even just half of it. What I'm doing here is just a basic composition. I'm mapping out the various parts, trying to place, trying to place things where they belong, see if it works, if it doesn't. Occasionally it does and other times it's not the best thing. So all of this is going to disappear, or most of it is going to disappear under layers and layers of paints. So this stage, if you are doing this on your own, uh, you shouldn't worry about any uh, of these colors being right or wrong. It's just the composition that matters. When we are painting outdoors, 
one of the biggest advantages and one of the biggest challenges also is the fact that you have almost too much information. So you have to, at the same time, let's say you are not talking at the same time as well, like I do, but you have to decide what to include into your painting. You have to weed out the unnecessary parts and you have to catch your canvas when it is about to be blown away by the wind. Uh, you have to clean your hands when you get totally sticky with paint and let's say you don't get hungry, thirsty or any other melody is not ailing you then you have to create a composition you have to balance the colors typically outdoors it dries a lot quicker than inside the studio or at home so it's it gets a bit tricky to make sure that everything is working as it should and overall just keep balancing the colors all right now I'm moving on around the color circle and I'm going to work with primary blue next I'm working my way around the palette so I'm starting with red and then I'm moving on to blue across some violets and look what happens with violets. My violets from primary red and primary blue are quite a dark violet, quite a dark color. It's almost, it would do, it would double as black occasionally, it might. Okay, now I've got a decision here. No, I'm just going to get rid of that. All right, so I've got all these darks to add. And by the way, as soon as I pick up a bit more of my white, I have a chance for painting an initial version of those lovely bluebells. Make sure that you don't paint bluebells with any sky color. You want to stick to the slightly violet blue Loads of trains here today. I think it's going to be that will be nice. And again. I keep running out of white. You will notice that, uh, especially if you're coming from watercolors, you are going to use a lot more white because when you're working with acrylics, you are not using water. You're not painting with water. You are painting with the paint. And one single way to make a color lighter, to control the tone, how light or dark your colors are, is 
by adding light. So light is when you mix it in with a pinch of white. Now I'm going to be a bit, I'm going to slow down at this point. So I keep looking up. Every time you see my hand stopping like that in midair, I'm actually peering over the canvas, looking at the scene. So I keep gazing up. Even when I'm doing this, I'm just smudging the paint around. I'm already, my, I'm lifting my eyes and I'm looking at the scenery in front of me. Now, I am a palette knife artist, not a sponge artist, so just bear with me. Eventually, I get to the point where I've had enough of my sponge. And I begin placing some of these marks with the palette knife, just retracing my steps, what you see me here do. Okay. Right, and now I'm moving on to my greens. And I will be using a lemon, a cadmium lemon, and mix it with my blue to create these crazy bright greens. Now there is a problem with that green. This green does not exist in my actual nature scene. That's a crazy, silly Lego green. Now, if I add all my lemon, possibly, it's still not what it should be. So I'm mixing in some of these reds that I had on my palette. And now it's beginning to calm down. It's getting closer to an actual proper, a bit more muted turquoise. Something that could possibly be dubbed as a natural green.
so I think that's my base for starting to paint with an actual palette knife so let's get on with that my next challenge is to use a couple of colors with the palette knife so you can see that I squeezed out quite generous portions of these colors initially I'm just going to use a blue a different blue a yellow a different yellow mind you and a different red from what I use right here so initially it was primary red primary blue and what was that lemon yellow yeah now I've got just primary yellow for my yellow but my blue is going to be cobalt yeah so cobalt blue and for my red I will be using carmine the other two colors are just extra colors that I know I'm going to use and I will be using them quickly I might not want to mix them so these are forget the green forget the orange I will talk more about them once I get to that the white is here to uh, lighten up some of the mixtures because when you mix let's say this cobalt blue is excellent for some of the bluebell colors but uh, you might want to add a pinch of white to them so let's start with the back I'm going to go back to my carmine here and begin painting a very very gentle pink well some places it's gentle some places it decided to have a bit of a blast on my canvas which is fine we get along well with my colors essentially you want to and you learn to control your colors but it's a bit like uh, like having a relationship or you know like having a friend and you don't want to control every single sentence they utter because then it's the fun is gone you know you don't want to have that you want to have a bit of a freedom you want to give space to the other person now it is very similar to painting with the palette knife because typically your colors will have their own little idea of what they want to do on the canvas and if you allow them to have their own little space then very often they surprise you with some phenomenal effects all right so now i'm going back to my cobalt blue and I ran out of cobalt blue so you will notice you are using a lot more color when you are painting with the knife than when you are painting with just your brush or sponge that's another reason why you don't want to squeeze out too many colors especially painting outdoors these colors are going to dry on your palette very quickly so you never squeeze out more than what you know that you are going to use up
what I'm doing there is I'm trying to recreate that effect of all these uh, bursts of bluebells poking up towards the sky. And there is that stronger line where I start the stroke with the palette knife. I'm going to remove that by adding another and a larger layer of these blues right here. So you work your way from the back towards the front. Again, I have to go back for more blue. Oh, and more white. All right. Now, one thing I'm gonna try is add a bit of this green. You can see that as I mix my primary yellow with my cobalt blue, which is slightly purpley, it's not a primary blue and my primary yellow is slightly more normal behaving than my lemon yellow was in the first round. So I end up with this very natural looking green. Okay, so this is my green mixed from cobalt blue and primary yellow. There are some bursts of sunshine. So I will be adding a bit of this yellow here and there, as well as some white to lighten it all up. So it's never just one type of a green that you are mixing. Every single time I go back for more color, chances are I'm having a different, slightly different selection of greens on my palette and I also mix a bit more of the yellow or a bit more of the blue or add a bit more of the white to lighten it all up. And hence every single stroke or every, at least every batch, every couple of strokes when I go back for more, more color, it will look a bit different. And I'm adding a variety that makes it overall more pleasing. There is one more thing here. I want to have vastly warmer colors in the foreground than in the background. Now I'm picking up my crazy green. Okay, that's not the proper name, but it does look great, crazy to me and I'm going to have a bit of a, just a splattering of this green patterns right here. It's a bit less of a pain than trying to mix the whole thing over and over again every single time. Yeah. Now if I pick up some of my white and mix it with this green, I end up with the light greens that are that resemble some of those leaves in the forest. I guess I need more of my 
wild green. If you want to know what this is, it says light olive green by Fenelli Extract. So here I am essentially adding yellow, primary yellow mixed red. Why? That's not green at all. But it will look green if you look at it compared to the blue around it. And it will look green because it's what I used for mixing my initial light green. And your eyes, the viewer's eye, is something phenomenal. You can actually rely on people's minds to make a missing bits in an artwork. I'm going to make this side of the field kind of a fuzzy, uh, nondescript light because this is the corner of my canvas I don't want people to focus on that so I'm not going to give the viewer anything that's very clearly defined I don't want them to lose track of the focal point which is this big mass and lovely field of uh, yeah, there are some interesting creatures there. There are some branches in the back of various, various bushes that are just putting their leaves out there. So I'm adding that. as a hazy complex. And I'm making sure that all this green that I'm adding is well balanced. Balancing every single color is my priority when I paint outdoors. So just making sure that I have a composition and then once I decided on the composition, I no longer have to deal with compositional issues because I'm, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to reach, what effect and what goes where. From then on, the only question is just balancing that composition. Is it balanced? Is it not? Does it need something else? All right. And there it is. Again, I'm making this a fuzzy area here. Because you never know. Now, some of these murkier tones that you see me add is actually my version of adding brown. I'm not really using brown here, but I'm uh, mixing in my red in with my green, and occasionally it will show in its full glory as you can see it right here and in other times at other times it is going to be mixing into a greeny uh, a darker green so i'm adding some of these very nice reds this is my carmine turned a bit darker than usual, darker than you would expect Carmen to be. Simple reason is because I need, I needed a dark background here and some of these trees there you go they just need If 
you have extra branches here and there, you can just paint over them. If you get anything wrong at any time, just go back over it with the color of sky or the color of the bluebells and paint it out. It's as easy as that. Now I'm gonna go for my orange. Reason being that adding a pinch of this orange here and there, it's going to, number one, it's going to help some of those tree trunks look like they are being sunlit. And I'm going to use the other side of the palette knife. So the palette knife has two edges. One is that I have been using so far, it's this top edge. But now I'm going to use the other edge. And you can use, still sticking to your one hand that you are your painting hand, which I'm left-handed, sorry. Uh, I have been using this side, which if I hold my palette knife upright, it's the left-hand side. But now, because the sun is coming from that direction, you can see it on my face, uh, I will need to add a bit of a sunny effect to the trees on the right hand side. And I do that by making sure that it's the right hand side of the tree trunks that is painted with a bit of a sunny effect. It's also a very, very late evening time in the spring, so the sun is very low. It's almost, I could probably uh, sunbathe just standing up. So it's not like the sunlight is coming strictly from above. It's almost at an angle like that. Now I'm adding some of these. Okay, maybe a branch like that would receive the sunlight from above, but only at certain angles. Also, if you want anything to really stand out at this point, I recommend you to uh, consider what is behind. And if you have a darker patch, then, and you want to add a bit of a variety there, or you want to add some pattern of a wood, then that's the perfect place to add a few of these bushes, just the palette knife marks for uh, a bit of a jungle, like the one that I see in front of me. Okay, and then a few more perhaps. Now, if anything is on the side of the canvas, like right here, I don't want people to focus on that. So I will try to stay away from adding too much detail onto that. And also there has to be the occasional orange that is a bit like the ground right here at my feet. So what happens with this orange here, it brings out some of the pathways that I see that are trampled up. Unfortunately, there are people who seem to come here to perhaps lay in the flowers. I don't know. So I'm trying to be careful not to damage any of these plants so they can come out next year. But apparently people come here and I don't know, do they picnic? Whatever they do. But these warm colors that you see here, they are going to set, uh, they are going to bring this whole area forward. So it will come up, it will leap forward off the canvas and towards the viewer. At this point, I would take a step back, and I'm going to take a step back. Let's do this 
green here before I do that. And I evaluate what I've done and I'm thinking about how much it resembles or resembles not what I see in front of me. Now there are a few things that I see that are that I'm very very happy with and there are other bits that I think they need a bit more work. What I'm going to do is add a bit of the violet. So I'm happy with the blue as it is and as I'm talking the whole painting is drying by the way. I'm not just talking without with no good reason. I'm actually talking because I'm evaluating. I keep thinking at the canvas and I look at uh, what I painted behind. I look back at the canvas. I evaluate it as a composition without uh, comparing it with real life. So I keep, I, I have to do two things at this point. I have to see if I manage to capture the overall feel, the overall atmosphere of the place as I see it. And I can do that by taking a step back. And the other thing I have to do is forget everything around behind the canvas and just look at the canvas itself and see if the composition the color balance, light and dark tones, details versus larger areas work. So everything that is part of the composition, does it work, does it, work? Does it need any more uh, major changes at this point? While I still have all, uh, all the, the scenery in front of me, have I captured it or does it need anything else? I think I will need a few things here. I'm going to use a new blue and it's called Turquoise Deep. And I'm going to use a violet for For the blue bells. So a deep turquoise and a deep violet and because these are very very dark colors I will be adding some white to be able to lighten them up. Now some of the things that don't need any lightening is this dark in the back. very happy with those darks. I just want some of those bushes that are totally, totally dark in the back to really stand out as such. And then I have this other side here which is again massively dark. Some of those are same up there and I think I will add a pinch of the white here just to be able to add a bit of this bright bright color there that's lifting up the forest and I can see that some of the cooler greens that I can see this is it 
have the same or similar lighter cool greens up here to take a step back I think oh that's nice yeah I'm happy with that so that's going to be good this is a bit dark here too dark for something so far off in the corner. Maybe we need to take this dark down here. That's better. So I'm trying to keep the dark and light contrast away from the very side of the canvas. Just to keep the composition together, just to keep it nice and tidy. And there are a few things that I'm going to add here. And you can see that I'm adding this bit of a turquoise right in the midst of my very warm yellow greens. What happens here is twofold. There, there's a twofold reason for it. One is that the turquoise I added up there is a totally strange new pigment that I'm introducing into the canvas and every time you introduce a new pigment it's going to stick out like a sore thumb so unless you somehow make sure that that area and those colors are coming back in another place on the canvas it will be uh, almost like it will try to break the canvas in two so you want to bring back that color it might not be the exact same mixture, in this case it is, kind of. It might not be the exact same mixture, it might not be the exact same texture. But as long as it comes back, in whatever mixture or texture you choose it will help keep the canvas together one and whole and besides any cool color like this is a very very cool green any cool color will look actually very right not just for color balance on a canvas like this but also because if there is a sunlit side to these leaves, then guess what? There's going to be a couple of leaves that are in complete perfect shadow. And if you are trying to paint something alongside uh, impressionistic color principles, then you want to use cooler colors for the areas that are, uh, that are in the shadow and warmer colors for areas that are sunlit. It doesn't have to be so dark. It's enough for it to just have a cooler overall feel. And if you ever overdo it, you just go back over that with your warm colors again. All right, now that's it. I'm going to move on to my violet before it dries on me and I will mix it in with my cobalt blue. So this creates a lovely nice color that is very similar. It's just about the right color for bluebells. Let me show you. Let's bring it up close. Look at that. How about hold it up there? It could even have a bit more violet. Let me see. If I mix, when I mix colors, 
I don't just mix the whole batch. This was my batch of violet mixed with cobalt blue. What I do is when I need to modify it, I take just a bit of the previous color and then I modify just that bit. So that's my new violet color. Let's bring that up. Now that's spot on. That's exactly the purple that I'm after for the darker and shadowy side of these flowers. How to add that? Ooh. Some of these some of these previous marks thankfully have already dried so it's absolutely perfect. Some of those marks they are dry so I'm able to use those and those patterns that have been caked on to my canvas. I'm going to pick up the paint from a very thin even layer of paint on my palette. I pick it up and I have a fairly even layer on the bottom of my palette knife. There's a little bit of a uh, mark at the end but that doesn't matter. And then what I do is I very gently, totally flat, I place it down and graze it against those previous marks. Now some of it has uh, come up because it's not dry yet. But you see what happens here. I can actually use those previous palette knife marks to add textured effects. Look at that. I'm going to continue right here. So I just pick up the color from the palette. I have a thin, even layer of color on my palette knife. And I'm coming back here because this needs now a bit more color. And I'm just adding it like that. If you need a bit of a drama somewhere, like I think this painting needs a bit of a drama, especially right here, I'm going to pick up a bit more generous portions of this very dark violet. The deep violet is head on, right there, straight. And I'm going to add it over my existing blues and sometimes riding over my yellows. Now yellow and purple are complementary, so those are going to stand up and scream and dance and just create a fantastic show on the canvas. So using complementaries is great fun. You see I'm very very gently using the existing patterns textures on my canvas to create semi-abstract marks. It's not accidental what I'm doing here, so it's not accidents. Eventually you will get used to what your knife does and what you can expect from it. And then you begin uh, expecting these marks and knowing what they will create. So if I take a step back now, I think I'm happy with what I'm with the direction I'm going and now I think it needs a bit of a lighter violet. Let's see if what I mixed, the same mixture with a pinch of white, let's see if that actually fits my my flowers. Now look at that. I think it's perfect. It's just what I need. So now, if there are places that need a bit more of this lighter violet, lighter hue, this is way too turquoise. I'm going to add a bit. Okay. If 
if the weather is nice enough, warm enough, you can work on one side of the canvas. And while you are doing that, the other side is slowly drying. And in fact, it dried too much. So I think it needs not much, but it needs a few more strokes of light and dark lilac. Or not lilac, but it's this blue back color. And now I'm going straight on for marks that slightly resemble the flowers themselves as they are lifting their head towards the sky. is over here I've got a few more strokes of this turquoise which I don't think I need let me see if I lighten it up a bit more no it still doesn't really fit anywhere it's not really needed it's not adding to the composition it might add a little bit right there a bit at this point it's you see, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the violets, that I'm picking up a very, very thin layer of uh, color and I'm using the caked on previous textured marks that I left there with previous layers. And I can layer totally contrasting colors without turning them into mud. So this is unique to acrylics. You can only do this in acrylics in at least one go, in one sitting or one standing. Uh, in any other medium, these colors would mix up into mud. So I'm coming to the end of my painting session here. It's not just the sun setting slowly, it's getting chilly. My mind is getting tired and I think I've done what I could in just one go without going overboard with everything. I'm gonna look at this yellow or orange rather. If I need anything else. In that regard, perhaps a bit. Yeah. Just adding some silly details here. At this point now, this is when somebody should stop me. Please, please, please yeah. stop me. You know, when you begin thinking about what else you can add, when you begin fuffing around, when you begin adding details that you are not sure, you keep looking, 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 what else, where else, mm, I've got a bit more color, mm, there's another detail that I haven't paid attention to. Now that's the time to stop. Please do so. Come back another day, take photos, or start another painting if you feel like you still have the energy, but don't overdo it. Please stop five steps too early rather than one step too late. Okay? Enjoy painting.